Hello and good morning to all of you. I hope all of you are doing well and all of you are in good health. If you can recollect from the previous classes, we have learned that 8086 microprocessor has 20 address lines and 16 data lines. With the help of these 20 address lines, 8086 microprocessor is capable of addressing up to 2 to the power 20 address locations, which is equals to 1048576 address locations. This implies that 8086 microprocessor is capable of addressing up to 1 megabyte of memory space. Here, it is also understood that the address in case of 8086 microprocessor ranges from 00000H to FFFFH, which implies that in case of 8086 microprocessor, the address is of 20 bits or the size of address is of 20 bits. Now this leads to an inherent problem. The problem is that the size of the address is 20 bits, whereas the size of the registers that 8086 microprocessor has are of 16 bits. So it would be very difficult for one to fit the 20 bit address into 16-bit registers. In order to overcome this problem, 8086 uses memory segmentation. Memory segmentation is the process where the entire memory of the computer system is partitioned into logical segments. In case of 8086 microprocessor, the overall memory of the computer system is partitioned into logical segments of 64 kilobyte. So the one megabyte memory space of 8086 microprocessor is partitioned into 16 64 kilobyte segments. Now each segment is referred with the help of a segment number. These segment numbers are of 16 bits, which ranges from 0000 to FFFF. Further, within a segment, a particular memory location is specified with an offset. Again, the offset ranges from 0000 to FFFF. So here, the segment number is also of 16 bit in length and the offset is also 16 bit in length. So a logical address specified as segment followed by the offset. So in segmented memory addressing, absolute address is a combination of 16 bit segment number as well as and 16 bit offset. Now, in case of 8086, 8086 microprocessor allows the user to specify four distinct segments for simultaneous use within a given program. These segments are code segment, extra segment, data segment, and stack segment. Code segment is used in order to store programming instruction. Data segment is used in order to store data. Stack segment is used in order to store data or registers content temporarily. Extra segment is used in order to store data during string related operations. So 8086 microprocessor allows the user to specify four distinct segments for simultaneous use within a program. And as we have learned that each segment is of 64 kilobyte. So in case of 8086, a program can at the max address to 256 kilobytes of memory. Now each of these segments are marked by the 
segment register. So code segment is marked by code segment register, data segment is marked by data segment register, stack segment is marked by stack, stack segment register, and extra segment is marked by extra segment register. So each segment is of 64 kilobytes, so hence the program can refer only to 56 kilobytes of memory at any given instance of time. Now here, as I've said, you, as I've said, there are four segment register that marks the beginning of the, the individual segments. Now, along with the segment registers, you have the respective offsets. So with the code segment register, we use offset as IP. With the data segment register, we use offset as BX, DI, and SI. With stack segment register, we use offset as SP and BP. And with extra segment register, we use offset as BX, DI, and SI. So offset is nothing but the displacement that you create from the segment register in order to access specific byte in the given segment. So the physical address is divided into two components, which are segment and offset. So a segment register contains the starting address of the segment that will be appended by extra nibble internally to make 20-bit physical address representation. And then the offset is added in order to create displacement from the, the segment register in order to access specific byte in the memory. So an offset is the distance from the beginning of the segment to the location of the instruction or data within that particular segment. So this is a very simplified procedure of creating representation of 20-bit physical address. So what we do is we append an extra nibble internally to make uh, to the segment register in order to make 20-bit physical address and then we add offset to that in order to create displacement from the from the, uh, the segment register. So this is a very simplified process of creating a representation of 20-bit physical address. So Till now, we have learned about the way how the memory in case of 8086 is organized and the way how the memory is segmented. We have learned about the purpose of the, the segment number and the offset and we have learned about the way of generating the 20-bit physical address. Now let us move on to a brief description of the interrupts in 8086 microprocessor. Now, interrupt basically refers to a condition that halts the microprocessor temporarily to work on a different assignment. And once the assignment is over, the microprocessor will resume its normal activity. Now, interrupt is an event or a signal that calls for the attention of the CPU, allowing the peripheral device to access the microprocessor. On interrupt, or once the interrupt takes place, the processor completes the execution of the current instruction and starts the execution of interrupt service routine or interrupt handler. Interrupt service routine or interrupt handler is a program that tells the microprocessor what is to be done when the interrupt takes place. Once the ISR is executed, control has to return back to the main routine where it was interrupted. Now, in case of 8086 microprocessor, falling tasks are performed when the microprocessor encounters an interrupt. First one is to complete the current instruction that is in progress. Then push the content of the flag register onto the stack. Subsequently, push the code segment value onto the stack. Then push the instruction pointer value onto the stack. So these are the critical activities that are to be performed before the control transfer takes place to the ISR. So first, the microprocessor has to complete the current instruction that is in progress, then push the content of the flag register onto the stack, push the content of CS value onto the stack, push the content of instruction uh, pointer onto the stack. Now, this is performed in order to ensure that once the ISR execution is over, the control is transferred back to the location in the 
main routine. So this is a very important activity. So here, the internal implementation is also specified. The value of the stack pointer is decremented by two before the push operation takes place. So once the status of the main routine is stored onto the stack, that is the flag register, the CS and the IP. Now IP will be loaded from the word location. That means IP will be loaded with the the location where the ISR is present. So this is done by multiplying the interrupt number with 4. So IP is loaded from word location that is interrupt type into 4 and CS is loaded from the next word location. So the interrupt type is 2 then IP is loaded with uh, uh, 2 into 0, 4 that is 0, 0, 0, 8H and CS is loaded with 0, 0, 0, 8H plus 2 that is 0, 0, 0, 8H. And subsequently the interrupt flag and trap flag are reset to 0. So this is, this is done in order to ensure that uh, you, the, the interrupt flags are reset. So here once uh, the the IP and the CS is loaded with the uh, with the address of the ISR, so the ISR is executed. And once the ISR execution is over, then what we need to do is we need to return back to the main routine by popping out the content of the stack where we have which which we had stored in the stack. That is the content of the uh, the IP and CS of the main routine. So this is the way how the interrupt. Uh, is handled in case of 886 microprocessor. So we will again repeat it. So once the interrupt takes place, the 886 microprocessor performs the, uh, the sequence of action. So it completes the execution of the current instruction. Then it will push the content of the flag, CS and IP onto the stack in order to ensure that once the ISR is, execution of ISR is over it can return back to the main routine so once the content of a flag cs and ip are pushed onto the stack then uh, ap is loaded with the uh, the address of the isr uh, ip and IS, uh, cs is loaded with the uh, the the address of the isr and the and the isr is executed once the isr is executed uh, Again, the, uh, the content of the stack is popped out and loaded onto uh, the IP and CS and the, the normal execution resumes. Now let us try to understand different types of interrupts that are present in 8086 microprocessor. So there are basically two types of interrupts that are, uh, that are there in case of 8086 microprocessor. These are called as hardware interrupts and software interrupts. So hardware interrupts are those interrupts that are caused by any peripheral device by sending a signal through a specified pin to the microprocessor. Again, I'll repeat it. Hardware interrupts are those interrupts which are caused by an, any peripheral device by sending a signal through a specified pin to the microprocessor. So there are two uh, hardware interrupts in 8086 uh, microprocessor. They are NMI, it's non-maskable interrupt. It's a single pin, non-maskable hardware interrupt, which cannot be disabled. It has highest priority interrupt in 8086 microprocessor, or it is the highest priority interrupt in the 8086 microprocessor. So NMI, non-maskable interrupt, it's a single pin. Uh, it is a single pin, non-maskable hardware interrupt, which cannot be disabled. And so it is the highest priority interrupt in case of 8086 microprocessor. Likewise, we have INTR, that is interrupt request. So it provides a single interrupt request and is activated by IO port. This interrupt can be masked or delayed. It is a label triggered interrupt. It can receive any interrupt type so that the value of IP and CS will change on the interrupt type received. So depending upon what is the type of interrupt received, so the value of IP and CS will change accordingly. So there are two types of hardware interrupts. First one is NMI, which is non-maskable, and it assumes the highest priority. And we have INTR, which, which is a maskable interrupt. And in case of uh, uh, INTR, the value of IP and CS will change on the type of interrupt that is being received. Now, software interrupts. Software interrupts, these are uh, 
these are basically programming instructions that are inserted into the in, inter, inserted into the program in order to generate interrupts. Now, in case of 8086, there are 256 software interrupts. These instructions are of the format int and type. That is, in some of the literatures, you may find it as intn, where type ranges from 0 to ff, that is, from 0 to 255. So, the starting address ranges from 00000H to 003FFH. These are two byte instructions. In this case, IP is loaded from type into 04H and CS is loaded from the next address given by type into 04 plus 02H. So, this is what we have already learned. So, instruction pointer is loaded with uh, type that is n into 04h and cs is loaded from the next address given by type into 04 plus 202h. So some important uh, software interrupts are type 0, type 1, type 2, type 3 and type 4. So type 0 corresponds to divide by 0. Type 1 is used for single step execution for debugging a program. Type 2 represents NMI and is used uh, in power failure conditions. Type 3 represents a breakpoint interrupt and type 4 is the overflow interrupt. So this is in brief about uh, the interrupts in 8086. So in today's class, we have learned about uh, the memory organization of 8086 microprocessor, where we have seen uh, the, the use of uh, segmented memory and the very purpose of segmented memory. And we have learned about how to create 20-bit uh, representation from 16-bit segment uh, number and 16-bit uh, offset. We have also learned about various uh, segments that may be there in an 8086 program. We have learned about the various offsets that can be used in regards to uh, different segment registers. And we have learned about how to generate 20-bit physical address. Then we moved on to interrupts in 8086, where we have learned about what is interrupts and how 8086 microprocessor handles interrupts as and when it occurs. Then we have learned about different types of interrupts in 8086 microprocessor where we have seen we can have hardware interrupts and uh, software interrupts. We have also learned that there are two types of hardware interrupts, NMI and INTR, where we have 256 software interrupts in case of 8086 microprocessor. So uh, this is the end of the class. Thank you very much and have a very good day.